Good morning. Good morning. It's good to see you all. Notice I'm here on my porch again, and uh, we're going to do our children's liturgy of the word for this Sunday, which is Pentecost Sunday. It's the last Sunday of Easter as we would normally celebrate it. So we have this closing of this Easter feast and we'll start a whole new season. So we'll see some changes in colors and we'll see some other kinds of things that um, will show us a difference in the seasons of the church. So let's talk a little bit about this Pentecost Sunday, but let's focus on the Mass first. Did you get to watch the Mass? If you haven't, We'll, we'll kind of share with you a little bit about what went on. If you did, who was the celebrant for the Mass? It was Father Jeff. And Father Michael had some uh, an anointing to do. There was a sick person that he went to anoint. So he wasn't able to be with us for the recording of the Mass. So Father Jeff did it by himself. And you saw Miss Courtney. Uh, doing the reading in the, at the Mass. So it was kind of fun to have an extra person or a different person uh, doing the Mass with us at that time. So Father Jeff was there and notice the change in the color. What was the color that was worn by Father Jeff? It was red. Red is the sign of the Holy Spirit, the color of the Holy Spirit. And I'll share a little bit more of that, but let's get him vested. Let's get his vestments, his mass clothes put on. So we got Father Jeff. We'll bring him down here. It's a little breezy again this morning. So he'll be, uh, I'll probably have to straighten him up a couple of times. Remember this? It's his stole. Again, it's the sign of his priestly office, showing that he is a priest. We'll get that all on nice and neat. And then remember, the other part of it is the chasuble. Chasuble, so it goes over his head. And again, it's part of his vestments, especially for Mass, to show that he's the priest. So there we go, Father Jeff, all vested for Mass. <clears throat> now I said, red is the color that we use when we celebrate the Holy Spirit. Red is also used when we celebrate martyrs, people who have died for the faith. So we kind of think of the red as the blood of the martyrs. Today we see it as red as the fire of the Holy Spirit. And that will be part of the story that we share today as well. So let's take a look at our reading. Our readings, if you didn't know, are always taken from a Bible. Now sometimes I've used my phone to read from it because I've got the readings that will come to me from the Bible through my phone. Or we use a special Bible at church called a lectionary, which puts all of our readings in a nice, simple way so that it's easy for us to proclaim them. But here we have the book, the Bible, and Bible is really a whole bunch of different books. And when we read the Bible, when we hear the Bible read to us, we hear God's word. We hear God's love for us in these words. So let's take a look at the story for today. When the day of Pentecost, there it is, Pentecost, had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly a sound came from heaven like the rush of a mighty wind, and it filled the house where they were sitting, and there were appeared to them, and there appeared to them tongues as a fire distributed and resting on each of them and they were filled with the Holy Spirit who began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews devout men from every nation under heaven and at this sound the multitude came together and they were bewildered because each one heard them speaking to it in his own language. They were amazed and wondered saying are not all these who are speaking Galileans. How is it that we hear each of us in his own native language? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, 
and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arab Arabians. We hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. And they were all amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? We say the word of the Lord because this was a reading from the New Testament and we all respond, thanks be to God. Thank you, God, for that great story that you just gave us. Wow. So you have to picture what was happening. They're all hiding in a room. One of the other gospel stories say that they were hiding for fear that the Jews would come and do to them what they did to Jesus. Okay, so they were a little bit scared. And as they were sitting there, they heard the, they heard the strong wind whoosh, and fire appeared. And in a lot of the pictures of the art, the, the uh, paintings that are done of this scene, the, the flame is like little, little fires on top of everyone's head. Wouldn't that have been kind of cool to see? That's pretty fun. But what it was is the Holy Spirit came in full power and entered into them. Now remember what I said, each of us has the Holy Spirit in us because of our baptism. So we have the Holy Spirit. We have that power. We just have to, through our prayer, unleash it on everything. What was the power that the apostles and everyone who was there experienced? That, what did they experience? What did they feel? Well, they felt confident in God's love and God's word that they could go out and share it with people. And when they did, they were speaking to all kinds of people who didn't speak the language of the apostles. They spoke Aramaic. They were from Galilee and they spoke Aramaic. And it's kind of a complicated language. But here are people from all over the world who didn't speak Aramaic, and yet, when the apostles spoke, these people were hearing in their own language. So they understood. God wanted the words of the apostles to go out to all these people and be understood. That's why at Mass, when we hear all of those readings, then Father, or the deacon, if he happens to be there, will give a homily. And that homily is a way to open up, like this, open up the word to help us understand it just a little bit better. And that's hopefully what I've been able to do for you today a little bit. This idea of the Holy Spirit coming on the apostles and everything that went on. People were really astounded and a lot of people came to believe in God to believe in Jesus with all of that. So today has been the first day where we've had regular masses at church. Now mom and dad may have chosen for safety reasons not to come to mass today and that's all right. Normally we would say we need to be at mass on Sunday but our bishop who is our shepherd has said there's no, the, right now we don't need to come to mass on Sunday. And that's going to be for a while yet. What we're trying to do as a church under the bishop is to prevent people from getting sick from that virus that everyone talks about. But there will be some folks that come. And when those folks come to church, we're taking some precautions. We're using hand sanitizer. We're keeping our distance. We're doing a lot of little things so that, yes, people could come to Mass, and yes, they will be safe. Well. If I don't see you at Mass, I miss you. I look forward to when you can come. If you do come to Mass, I'll be there today at the 7.30, or at the 10.30 Mass, and at the 1 o'clock Spanish Mass, just so that I can see everyone that I didn't see. And I was at the 4 o'clock Mass last night. I know I saw some of you there. That was great. All right, and then the other thing that I like to do when I finish up Children's Liturgy <coughs> is to give you a blessing. So in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may he look upon you with kindness and bring you peace. And may the blessings of Almighty God, Father, and Son, and Holy Spirit, 
come down upon you and remain with you forever and ever. Amen. Hope to see you in church. Bye.